But now I'm about to see the U.S. Army's vision of the future. The supply line to the front line is as vulnerable as it is vital. Napoleon said, an army marches on its belly. Basically, that means an army can only go as fast as its ability to resupply. That's why those supply lines are the favorite and often the easiest targets for an opposing force. Sticking to the roads makes it easy for the enemy to target supply vehicles. The solution is to simply make the route up as you go along without having to worry about what's in the way. I've already seen the SMSS Squad Mission Support System. This unmanned ground vehicle is designed to provide robotic transport for light infantry forces. By carrying supplies and equipment, it reduces the soldier's fatigue, literally taking the weight off his shoulders. But at the Gascola test site in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, they're pushing the UGV concept to the absolute limit of current technology. They've developed a robotic transport platform that's bigger, smarter, and tougher. They hope it will change the nature of ground supply lines forever. I'd like to introduce you to Crusher. It's a completely autonomous vehicle that can go over any terrain, carry all the supplies you need, and never puts a man at risk. It's the smart way to take care of your troops on the battlefield of the future. It carries up to four tons at a time, and it can handle just about any kind of terrain. But why is it called the Crusher? The name the Crusher came from a video we did years ago showing the vehicle driving over cars and smashing them. After working on the Crusher program for two and a half years, Tony Stentz knows exactly what it can do. The Crusher, I believe, is the most terrain-capable robot out there. Uh, there is no other robot that can drive over the types of terrain that this robot can handle. Whether it's climbing over rocks, bulldozing its way through forest, clambering out of the trenches, or navigating up near vertical slopes, the Crusher doesn't care how rough the journey is, mainly because there's no driver to worry about. Back in 2001, robotics expert John Bears set out to create much more than just another remote control vehicle. We wanted to be able to carry a lot of payload. We wanted to be very fuel efficient. And we wanted to do it in a manner that the vehicle would be very resilient to mistakes. If you've ever driven an SUV over rough ground, you can feel every bump. And when you hit a crater, you definitely know it. The driver of the Crusher sitting miles away in front of a screen has obstacle avoidance software, tilt sensors, cameras, just about everything to guide him except that gut feeling. We have a skid plate underneath that's suspended by rubber. We have a front bumper that adds a lot of cushion. We have suspension that can move a long range so that as the vehicle goes through different kinds of rough terrain, it can survive. Inside the mobile command unit, Chief Engineer David Stager talks me through the controls, which are so simple to use. If you've ever driven a car, even a virtual one, you can handle the crusher. All right, so you've got uh, reverse, you got gas, and the old steering wheel. Yep. Probably nothing right now. Coming up right here, I can see that there's definitely going to be some bumps. Yeah. How do I determine that that's OK for that vehicle? Uh, for this vehicle, it would have to be a really big drop-off for it not to be okay. Mm -hmm. That's great. It kind of steps right over fairly rough that. terrain. When you're in a vehicle, you're used to feeling it. Yep. And now you're just trying to take all that information basically in with your eyes. Mm -hmm. Even with its onboard peripheral vision, driving the Crusher takes a bit of getting used to. Probably as close to that end. I know what you're trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> I could definitely see how this would be beneficial as a reconnaissance vehicle. Yes. Driving this versatile vehicle is a lot of fun. But what's really amazing is that Crusher can drive itself. The 
Crusher uses its laser scanners right here to see what's going on directly in front of it, and the cameras to see a little bit further away. And what it does is it combines all of that information into one clear picture of what it needs to do. This vehicle can actually drive itself over almost any terrain. And if it can't, it's smart enough to figure it out. The Crusher is trying to get to some particular location or waypoint. It plans a path that will take it to that waypoint, and it attempts to drive that path. But when it encounters an obstacle that's in its path, then it plans an alternative route that takes it around the obstacle and to its objective. This is robot technology that thinks for itself. It's doing things that starts to get human-like. You see it pull up to a ditch and pause for a couple seconds. You see it back up, drive around a tree, and go around up a hillside. And you scratch your head and you say, wow, that actually was a computer doing that, not planned at all, just working through its algorithm. And that, to me, is starts to work. It's really neat when you start to see human-like decision-making happening. All of this information gathering means it can do a lot more than just taking supplies to the front line. It is possible for a crusher to be used uh, for a scouting mission, where it is sent out ahead of the troops to uh, drive in a stealthy manner through the woods, through the valleys, to try to detect the enemy's location. Given that they're hybrid electric, they can sit and watch quietly for a long, long time. And in fact, I think one of the biggest uses for one of these vehicles is simply reconnaissance. Just go and look and look quietly and provide data back to the, the ground forces. Being unmanned allows it to operate in hazardous environments. Crusher can go places where there might be uh, radiation that would be too dangerous for a person to go, places where there might be uh, biological contamination or chemical contamination. And Crusher doesn't have to be fed. It can just sit there and wait and wait until something important happens. The Crusher is at the very forefront of military computer technology. But like GPS and lasers before it, this incredible capability will eventually become available to the general public. It will help us develop autonomous vehicles that drive themselves that uh, ordinary people will use. We can sit back and read the newspaper as the cars drive themselves. It's expected to be fielded within 10 years. After that, the possibilities are endless. The Crusher is a dynamic system that can perform reconnaissance, resupply, medevac, and even direct action missions. It is a smart, versatile weapon for the battlefield of tomorrow. Next, the technology revolution will shape the nature of war for decades to come. This is a defining moment for the United States Army. Its name is Future Combat Systems. Future Weapons, I've been tracking down the very latest in weapons technology. I've been dazzled by amazing innovations and the sheer breakneck speed of change. But what I'm about to show you goes way beyond anything I thought was possible. It's not just a weapon, not even a weapon system. It's a whole new battlefield concept built from the ground up, based on the very latest technology and software design. It's the basis of U.S. military thinking for decades to come. In fact, this is nothing less than an evolutionary leap onto tomorrow's battlefield. The U.S. Army is leading the way by transforming into a faster, more agile force with increased lethality and a superior understanding of what's happening on the battlefield through an incredible digital network. It's called Future Combat Systems, or FCS. And it's here today. Also here today, in the deserts of New Mexico, are some of the military's highest ranking VIPs and top brass. They've come to see a first time demonstration of the FCS concept, or at least a fraction of it. And the ideal location for such a significant event is White Sands, the missile range where the Army have been testing top secret weapon systems for decades. 
basis of FCS is that each and every part of the combat force is networked to share information. In history.